A friend of mine recently sent me a mix CD, and it made me really miss the days when I used to exchange them with friends. Sending a playlist, it just doesn't feel the same. While trying to scratch that itch, I came across some neat projects on Etsy, but I couldn't find what I really wanted. An entire music player, cheap enough that I could just give them to people. So I set out to make a 3D printed, self-contained music player that costs less than $10 and looks like a cassette tape. You know, for that retro vibe. Despite my urge to reach for my drawer of ESP32s, I figured a pre-made PCB might be best for both my budget and my battery life goals. I found this PCB called a BT201, and it plays MP3s off an SD card and has Bluetooth as well, and they're under $2 a piece. It supports many codecs and works no problem with a 32 gig card. They also sip power at under 50 milliamps. Next, we need a battery. I chose this 523450 battery with a 1000 milliamp capacity. If you buy 10, they are $2 each. The numbers in the battery actually tell you the size. In this case, 52 millimeters by 34 millimeters by five millimeters tall. If you've ever heard of an 18650 battery, which are using everything from vapes to Teslas, they are named the same. They're 18 millimeters in radius and 65 millimeters long. Finally, we need a battery charger. I tried these cheap TP4056 USB-C boards, but I didn't like them. They got really hot, they're missing the resistors for USB-C charging, and you can't power your device while it's charging. Instead, I found this little battery bank circuit that outputs 5 volts and costs only $1.20 a piece. This thing worked perfectly. Almost. More on that later. Then all we need is a switch to turn it on and off and an SD card. I found a layout that works and then I spent way too long printing way too many iterations to finally get this cassette tape perfect. There are four buttons on the PCB that control previous, next, volume, and mode, and I modeled those in with little buttons that work perfectly. A 0.2 millimeter tolerance for support printing, and it's actually really satisfying. In order for the BT201 to fit, I did have to remove both USB ports from the PCB, which is fine because we don't need them anyway. They pop off relatively easily with the help of a hot air station. The wiring on this project is really simple. The battery goes into the charger, the charger output goes to the PCB with a switch in between on the positive, and that's pretty much it. I used some CA glue to secure everything down, and everything fits nice and snug. Unfortunately, when testing, I ran into a few problems. First, the player powers down after a few seconds, and that's because the battery charging circuit has an automatic shutoff when it draws less than 50 milliamps. This is probably due to its design as a power bank PCB where you're usually charging a phone. The BT201 draws almost exactly 50 milliamps, but it's just not enough. So I needed a way to draw a little bit more. I can add a resistor between the switch positive and negative to convert some extra current into heat. Ohm's law says that 5 volts divided by 470 ohm resistor is almost exactly 10 milliamps. One resistor and a bit of heat shrink later and everything was working perfectly. There are probably more elegant solutions like using a battery charging circuit that doesn't have these problems, but at 60 milliamps, I'm not too worried about it. The 1000 milliamp battery can still last over 15 hours, which is higher than my self-imposed goal. I guess I also need to add two cents to the budget for the resistor. The second problem, and I couldn't solve this one, at least in this version, is that this board does support Bluetooth, but only as a sync meaning you can connect to it over Bluetooth and use it to play out to a speaker, but it won't transmit audio to the wireless headphones. This sent me down a rabbit hole to discover what chip was actually in this thing. I saw the TXRX lines on it, so I knew it must be programmable. I discovered that nearly all these cheap BT modules are based on chips by a company called Jai Li, and the chips are called the AC690X series. These chips appear to be a clone of an earlier chip called the KT1025A by a different Chinese company. But from what I can tell, all these modules now just have the AC690X in them. That's probably because they cost as little as 27 cents each. I found a bunch of great resources, a couple libraries on GitHub, and even a subreddit dedicated to these things. I discovered that it can actually transmit, but it requires sending serial commands over the TXRX lines to pair with my headphones, and I just ran out of patience. I guess it's still somewhat useful as a Bluetooth adapter, but it's not what I had in mind. If I ever do a version 2.0, I'll make my own PCB and my own firmware that will address this. Anyway, to wrap up the build, I glued on the cassette tape hump, which I printed separately so I could print it without any support. Then I designed some stickers to give it a retro feel. I'm not the best graphic designer, but I think this will do for now. The whole unit fits nicely into an old cassette tape case. Oops. No problem, I can fix it. There we go. The only thing left to do, and perhaps the hardest part of this whole project, is finding audio files in the age of streaming subscriptions. I won't get into how to do that here. My total per unit cost was $8.52, including filament. In order to get this price, you have to wait for AliExpress and order in quantities of 10. Everything is about twice as expensive if you buy it on Amazon. In 1979, a 60-minute cassette tape would run you $2.79. In 2025 dollars, 
That's $12.33, and I absolutely did not cherry pick that year for any specific reason. I never really liked the feeling of nostalgia, because there's just nothing you can really do to satisfy it. Buying my childhood toys and games certainly didn't bring me any joy. But the dopamine hit from creating something like this, it really confused my brain into getting close, and that's good enough for me. I might make a few of these to give away, so let me know in the comments if you're interested in one. And as always, the files and plans are available for free in the description. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.